Tonight we are working on the hydraulic reservoir for the forge press. My rams, the dirty bastards, they were supposed to be here a couple days ago. They didn't ship until a couple days ago. Apparently they're due here tomorrow. I'm back to work Monday, so that really sucks. I kind of wanted to get this thing done before I went back to work. But anyway, so the plan is tonight we have a bunch of holes to drill in here for these. Um, they're the thread protectors you get on your black iron pipe. It's a decent enough fitting. There's really not going to be any pressure on this, but the reason I'm using these is because they are a lot more weldable than the malleable fittings that you get for black iron pipe. Those melt through real easy. These I'm going to have to tack all the way around because they're not very thick walled, but they should work for us. Ideally, what would be better here is if I had some uh, three quarter by or six by three quarter weldalettes for these, which are a special fitting made for welding onto big black iron pipe like this. So what we want on here, we want, we want a port for a drain because sooner or later you're going to have to change your hydraulic fluid. We're going to want a suction port and the reason this is up from the bottom some, that way the hope here is that any contaminants and stuff, the heavier metals, flakes, rust or whatever happens to be in here, which we're going to brush it out, but you're never going to get it all the wire brush, especially the length of this thing. I want this up a little bit so that stuff can collect in the bottom. Also, if we get uh, fluid or anything in here, I want it to be able to collect in the bottom. That way I can take care of it as I need to. Farther up, we have a bubble float. So all this is, it is a three-quarter inch fitting. It's basically a sight glass with a bubble on. This has Teflon seals in it. It's good for oil, refrigeration, things like that. So there's a little red ball in there, so I'll be able to see the level of my hydraulic fluid when I fill this thing up. And I'm putting this up a little bit higher. So that's going to go up here. Okay, then we're going to need a fill port to actually put our hydraulic fluid in. I'm going to put that up here. I'm not putting it in the top because I don't plan on filling this thing all the way up to the top, but I want to put it somewhere where it's a little bit easier for me to reach. We're going to come off of that with an elbow and probably a ball valve and then the, uh, say like a two inch to three quarter inch fitting, uh, reducing coupling, that way it acts like a funnel. And then finally, we have our return that comes back from the, um, the cylinders. I'm going to go into that up, up high. Now, I don't need an oil reservoir this big, a hydraulic fluid res. I'm doing this because the more fluid I can have in the system, the cooler it's going to run. Now I could put a, uh, say a fan coil or something like that in, uh, kind of like an oil radiator, an oil cooler, I guess the proper word for it. I could do that, that would work quite well, but I think we should be alright with this setup. Worst comes to worst, we'll put one in down the road. Now I'm going to three-quarter fittings because I'm probably going to have to reduce the reduce things down, but I want to carry as much volume as I can on this suction and the return coming back. That way the return on the, uh, the hydraulic cylinders is a lot faster. The quicker you can empty that fluid out of there, the faster it's going to be. And remember, we have two four-inch cylinders going to be working in tandem with each other for the center for the H-frame portion of that press. But uh, anyway, we're going to start hogging holes. We'll speed things up so you guys aren't just watching me hog holes, and I'll see you on the other side.
I'll tell you what guys, those holes just did not want to get drilled. What a pain in the ass. First hole out of the chute, we busted off a, uh, <laughs> we busted two teeth off of the drill bit, off of the hole saw. Second hole in, we snapped our feeler bit in half because the bit caught, and I was forced to use a bent bit I had, which really sucked because it's the last one I have and I keep forgetting to get the new ones. But, we have five holes in this six inch pipe. Now, we're going to do, I'm gonna, it's going to be mostly kind of tacking, and what I'm going to try to do here, and I'm not the best at, I'm a pretty novice welder. Most of you guys who watch this channel for a while know that. I can I have a, enough skills to be dangerous, and enough sense to know that I have a whole lot to learn to become a good welder. So we're going to see how this goes. Now I'm not burying these fittings too deep in there. Like I said, a proper fitting would be something like a weld a -let, which is made for this kind of thing rather than what I'm doing here. But these should work. If they don't work, I will grind them off and order up the weld a -lets. It's nothing but time, right? So we're going to tack these in, see where we get. See what develops, see what happens, and go from there. This will get the old handy dandy welding helmet on, show off the white hair. Premature gray, it's good for you.
Well, there's our cheapskate hydraulic tank. So this will be our reservoir for the uh, forge press. Now this thing looks awful big. Now, so let me explain that. So this is five feet tall, but it's a six inch pipe. So six inch pipe can hold 1.022 gallons of fluid per foot. So really this is only a little bit over a five gallon reservoir right here. Now, I probably don't even need to, it probably won't be filled up all the way. Um, definitely want some room for expansion anyway in the system. When that oil heats up, it's going to expand a little bit. But, uh, and it will heat up. That is something um, with hydraulics as it runs through the pump and you're using it, it does generate heat. That's why you have hydraulic coolers on your tractors that are running 12 hours a day. At least I know that's what ours run all summer long. But, um, but if worse comes to worse and we cannot control the temperature with this tall, big reservoir here, we will try to uh, probably put in a hydraulic cooler of some sort for the system. This thing's going to be running a lot. At least I think it's going to be running a whole lot. I hope it is. But um, So what we're going to do with this, this is going to get mounted to the back side of the forge press. It's going to be in between the, um, the H-frame and the C-frame portion of it, behind that upright. And that's why we welded on a uh, piece of half-inch plate steel on the bottom, 12 inches long, 8 inches wide. I'll be able to weld that plate steel. I'm going to put some 3x3 uh, three three angle iron on the back side to uh, make a frame for the... Oh shit, help me out here. Make a frame for the hydraulics. I have a 3 horsepower motor for it. Uh, supposedly my pump's supposed to be here tomorrow. Supposedly the cylinders are supposed to be here tomorrow. I can't really go any further on that frame until I have the cylinders here. The other thing we're going to have to do I'm going to have to make the door coming into here much taller um, because I'm lacking a good foot to get that thing in here. That thing's about seven feet tall. Now I could have had it sort of rise up from the bottom, but I wanted to be able to hold my work in one place while whatever it is comes down on it. That way I'm not trying to not trying to hold things square. I know many blacksmiths do it and they do it just fine, but uh, I've never had one of these before, so I'm trying to make this thing as user-friendly as I can. And to be honest with you, you can only watch so many YouTube videos, and you're never going to get a feel for any of it until you uh, actually do it yourself. So I'm kind of trying to take a lot of ideas of the different things I like from what I've seen. I've done a lot of research, you know, H-frame versus C-frame, and each one has its own benefits. That's why we're doing a two-in-one machine. Um, so the center frame will be the, uh, the workhorse for any of the big squishing and the outside will be for any of the fine work that needs to be done. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, that's where we're at on this build right now. I hope you guys are enjoying this one so far um, and see what develops. So I will catch you guys on the next one.